Welcome in 2023 MLB Fantasy Baseball Analytics Show. We're going to put in some work today talking about starting pitching and what I'd like to call the ace archetype. Looking specifically, we're going to cut very broad strokes here, delving into the granular level, looking at arm performance, looking at individual pitch mix, and working around pretty much a, a framework to understand who are the aces, what is the story that's being presented by the starting pitching year over year? How did the mix change? How has the velocity changed or the spin rates changed? So we're going we're gonna to go in pretty deep here. Just getting you started off, you know, the pitching evaluation. Ultimately, I think I'm doing an arm evaluation. I want to see a guy's stuff. I'm drafting stuff. I'm looking at a story about how this pitcher has progressed over his career, where his stuff is the last time we saw it. You know, we won't know what he did in the offseason, how the arm responded to the load from last season, but but what did we last see in working off of that? And I, I draft, I, I pay for in my salary cap drafts, I pay for filth. I pay for that nasty stuff. I might not necessarily catch all the good pitching today, the quality guys. It's not based just on innings. I like strikeouts. I like gems. And I like winning fantasy leagues. So I hope you do too. We're going to dig in here. It, it's going to be a combination. As much as I can, it's fan graphs and baseball savant. Really, we're going to accentuate the baseball savant side of it. But you got to have your fan graphs up because sometimes you got to pop in there that K to BB percentage on fan graphs, the FIPS, the game logs. There's a lot of good information over there. So I want to remind you guys of this helicopter approach. And I've circled a lot of these pitchers and the pitching metrics and different lists multiple times to get familiar. I'm looking for something to kind of pop off the page a little bit. So let's jump into this. So just in the back of your mind, as we evaluate these pitchers, as I'm looking for strikeout style stuff, strikeout stuff alone is, is not going to get it done because we need to have control. It's fine to have great stri strikeouts, but you can't be walking guys and you can't be giving up home runs. So that's the other part of it. So just let's start on fan graphs, starting pitching leaderboard. It, it will start, it'll sort by war. We're not really going to use that. I just like to click on innings pitched, sorting by that, because this, this will be in the back of our minds. And we're going to kind of control for innings. A guy that pitches more innings, we're going to need to see more Ks from. And, and we're going to see how we kind of tease out this, this innings number to begin with. So when we sort by innings, we see that pitchers are not going that standard 200 the way that they used to. We have eight pitchers over 200 innings. Alcantara, Nola, Michaelis, Burns, Valdez, Cole, Kelly, Shane Bieber, Manoa, Martin Perez, Yu Darvish, 194, Logan Webb, 192. So innings could be an indication of health. Is a guy going to give me a lot of innings? Is he going to take the mound every five days, up and down, getting me wins, getting me Ks? Will he be there? So, so we've got those innings there. The second thing that we're really going to look for, going to, again, fan graphs, a couple tabs over from the dashboard, going to advanced. On the advanced page, sort by K to BB percentage. This is what we talked about going month by month and looking at, but we can just take the annualized numbers. And what I want you to see here is looking at, as I deal with some of the pop-ups, the K per nine is right there. We get to see Shohei, Garrett Cole, Carlos Rodon, Nola, Gaussman, McClanahan, Corbin Burns, all... 10 plus to 11.87 K per nine. We're going to be seeing strikeouts there. Do some guys dip down? Verlander 9.5, Darvish 9.1, Shane Bieber 8.9. Nine being the line, I, I don't want to drop much below a 9 K per nine. Look at the walks per nine. Who got a little walkie? Otani 2.39, Garrett Cole 2.24, Rodon 2.63. That's a little high. The, the more elite walk guys, control guys, you'll see them here in the mid ones. Nola, 1.27. Kevin Gausman, 1.4. Verlander, 1.49. Darvish, 1.71. Bieber, 1.62. So that really tidy walk number can be as important because you're not just giving free passes. You're making important pitches, 
and your home run per nine, which is also here, will, will not lead to huge ERA blowups. Otani, 0.76 home run per nine. Here's Garrett Cole pitching in Yankee Stadium, 1.48 home runs per nine, typically has that. Rodon, 0.61, Nola, 0.83, Gaussman, 0.77, limiting that home run per nine. You want to limit, you want to linger to like a one. I like sub one home run per nine. Some guys are going to be a little bit blow up -y, So we have that in the back of our minds. And, and that K to BB percentage right there, all those pitchers have to be looked at. But that's not enough for me. I, I'm not satisfied with simple K to BB percentage. Be happy with that and move on. I want to look at the individual stuff. I want to go over to Baseball Savant and digest some of those advanced metrics. Let me just make sure we covered everything on the fan graph side. So it's familiarization. Pitching is something we have to navigate well in season. I want to spend more time analyzing my pitchers so I know where I can get those $20 aces, where I can spike breakout players a little bit late that people maybe were cool on, so I can spend more money on hitting. So, so we're going to spend a lot of time on pitching here. And let, let's go over. So we slide over to the Savant. And just teasing out a couple of the major tools on Baseball Savant. Leaderboards, pitching, swing, take, profile. It brings you to the swing, take, leaderboard. It says right here, every pitch is assigned a run value based on its outcome, ball, strike, home run, etc. This leaderboard shows those values. So this is outcome-based. How well do these pitchers go? And this list is very good. It sorts immediately by by the all and we talked about the heart the shadow the chase and those can be sorted individually and those tell you some good things but today i just want to show you one of the keys here is to normalize for numbers of pitches so sure sandy manoa verlander cease freed gallon darvish otani we, fran Valdez, nestor cortez pitch a lot rodan all with very good numbers but let's click on pitches to get the person that pitched the most, what will happen here, it'll, the pitches will be up and you will see the swing take value on the far right with the color coding is on the side. And what happens here, the more pitches, the more chance you have to positively impact run value. So what I like to see here is as we get deeper, as we get to less and less pitchers on this list, who is still able to pop, to pop a very nice swing take value. Garrett Cole here, minus 11. That's not wonderful. Has to do a little bit with those home runs. Nola, minus 24. Valdez, minus 31. Darvish, minus 34. Very good, but Darvish threw 3,300 pitches. Corbin Burns, very good. Minus 26 on the swing take through 3,200 pitches. Sandy Alcantara. So all these guys are going to be on our radar. They're going to all be targets be draftable and we haven't gotten into prices yet for the salary cap but we'll swing back and see where the where the intersection point is on that but again we realize in the back these guys have pitched a lot of innings so what gets better here is less pitches with still a very nice swing take number you know darvish alcantara with the nice number 34 38 respectively and then we have dylan cease with a minus 34 on 3,100 pitches, showing kind of his filth. Musgrove, good pitcher. Logan, Logan Gilbert had a nice little season, okay. But then you got B Ron, a minus 28 on only 3,000 pitches. Even better, Alec Manoa on 3,000, minus 36. Carlos Rodan, a 30. Keeps going down. Verlander, a minus 36 on 300 less pitches. Zach Gallen, don't sleep here. 2,900 pitches, minus 34. Max Freed, 2,800 pitches, minus 34. Zach Wheeler, minus 25. So so just by that, I mean, Max Freed is a better pitcher than Zach Wheeler. He pitched better than Zach Wheeler last season. What kind of stuff was he using? It puts Max Freed into, into a certain amount of legitimacy. And you see guys not going well. Freeland, Herman Marquez, Marco Gonzalez, they all pitch, but they have... The numbers are reversed. You need a negative swing take number to be a pitcher. So a positive number is bad here, and they will color code that. So blue is cold. You know, Ranger Suarez, a guy was very high on. It, he got out of the gate slow. It didn't come together perfectly. He was good at the end of the season. Only a minus four. 
Quintana, Kyle Wright, Christian Javier, 2,700 pitches, a minus 28, very interesting. Luis Castillo, a minus 20. Julio Urias, a minus 26. Keeps going down. Nestor Cortez, minus 30. Tyler Anderson, minus 26. Interesting. There's Shohei, 2,600 pitches, a minus 33. Very effective with his stuff. Shane McClanahan, 2,500 pitches, a minus 27. So the deeper we go down here, when you see that red pop, it's going to indicate that this pitcher was very effective. Brandon Woodruff, 2,500 pitches, a minus 17. Tawan Walker, Patrick Sandoval, pretty decent. Spencer Strider, way down here, 2,300, popped a minus 23. Drew Rasmussen, Max Scherzer, a little bit injured last year, 2,200 pitches, minus 23. If he's healthy, he will be right back. Jeffrey Springs, who got paid, seems to have a little bit of stuff on him, minus 22. Tony Gonsolin had a nice season, minus 29. Clayton Kershaw was injured, still a minus 22 and 1,900 pitches. So look for that. Look for that red pop to give you an indication. You no, know, there's a sleeper, Jesus Lozardo, on 1,600 pitches, still a minus 10. If he pitched another 1,000 pitches, that number would likely be an 18 or something, so he, he could be good next season, just showing that he was effective with his arsenal. So the swing take number can be found individually on each individual player page on Baseball Savant, and they will break it down to how each pitch worked. And we also have leaderboards for how each pitch worked. So let's take a, let's take a quick glimpse of that. On um, Baseball Savant leaderboards, pitch arsenal stats leaderboard. What's interesting here, it's by pitch, so a single individual pitch working. Uh, you can see them all listed there. So we have Dylan Cease with a negative 36 on his slider. A, a particular pitch that a pitcher can ride that is just nasty, unhittable, it will pop out here. And so you can see what a guy is working with. Minus, minus 36 for Dylan C. Shohei Otani, minus 20 on the slider. Sandy Alcantara actually leads changeup, leads like a 91 mile an hour changeup for a minus 25 on his run value. Verlander with the four seamer. Edwin Diaz, Carlos Rodon with the four seamer. Corbin Burns with the cutter, minus 21. Spencer Strider with the four seamer. Alec Manoa with the four seamer. So, it, these specialty pitches will be the reason that those pitchers are very good again next season because they're going to be able to play off of this very hard to handle pitch. What I'd like to see is a very effective fastball, something that has some movement on it, some high, high velo, because that's going to keep the hitters off balance. It's going to keep the wear and tear down from not throwing so many breaking pitches and off speed pitches. And when the fastball doesn't really work, when the whiff rates are down, when the fastball is hittable, pitchers have to work around it. They may have to throw more slider. They may have to offset it with the two-seamer or with a cutter to try to make the fastball play up again, up a little bit if it's not a very good fastball. So you can check out that pitch arsenal. What I'll kind of do here, it, that's sorted by all pitch types. I like to go through and... Instead of all pitch types, look a little bit at each one. Just look at the four seamers. Verlander, Cortez, Carlos Rodon, Joe Ryan, Strider, Alec Manoa, Yimmy Garcia, Luis Castillo, Christian Javier, Zach Gallen, Jose Quintana, Julio Urias. All with this minus 17 on just the fastball. Tristan McKenzie firing a nice fastball. Scherzer are still in a nice fastball. So those guys are going to go pretty well again next season. Checking out the sinkers here. The sinker, not really an effective pitch. I mean, I named 12, 15 guys that had negative 17 run value. Here on the sinker, there's only Dylan Tate and Chris Bassett using a two-seamer. Marcus Stroman, Kyle Wright, Noah Syndergaard, Aaron Nola, Zach Wheeler, Jordan Montgomery, Mike Clevenger, all using a two-seamer, a.k.a. the sinker. For a negative 9 to negative 12 run value, they might use it for whatever reason. Let's check in on the change-ups. I mean, you see where I'm going here, but you just want to see who was really, you know, there's Alcantara with the change-up, Davies, Tyler Anderson, Zach McClanahan, Logan Webb, Jeffrey Springs, Edward Cabrera, 
Waka, and it really starts to trail off because I'm looking for special stuff. I mean, a minus eight on a pitch, okay, that's fine, but I would like to see that double digits, that teens plus, to know that the change out is, change up is working. But one thing that we didn't want to fall in love with that we learned in previous seasons is it's hard to maintain a really nasty change up year to year. The change up requires the velocity differential off of the fastball. It's a feel pitch. It's a shape pitch. So I've noticed the nastiest years of change up years, I do not want to buy into again necessarily because a little dip in velo will, on the fastball, that's not the, that's not the change up's fault but it's perceived it's easier to catch up to because you're not getting that differential on there. So things can go wrong with the change up, but at least we can see how it's going. The cutter, obviously we know Corbin Burns is going to be on here. He throws, yeah, he's number one, minus 21. Erasmo Ramirez, Drew Rasmussen throwing a good one. Emmanuel Classe, just as a closer, such an effective cutter. Kenley Jansen, notorious cutter. Joe Musgrove. Not a lot of names on there. Shane Bieber down there at just a seven. So you got a couple guys using the cutter, kind of a specialty pitch. The slider I do want to look at. Something that's typically a lot of getting a lot of strikeouts, a lot of guys throwing sliders. Dylan Cease, negative 36. Otani, negative 28. Edwin Diaz, Andres Munoz, Scherzer, minus 18. Camilo Duvall, seeing some closers with some filthy sliders there. Abel in just very limited innings to generate that high of a run value. They're not pitching, you know, that's not 3,000 pitches, I'm sure, for uh, Camilo Duvall. No, it's 40, it's 400 pitches. But it's so effective, you're seeing it pop on the run value. Yu Darvish is there. Bieber is there. Pavetta, Garrett Cole, Kershaw. Some good sliders in there. And the last one is the splitter. You're going to see one man on top of here, and that's going to be the Gauss man. Tony Gonsolin negative 16, Taewon Walker, negative 14, Kevin Gaussman, minus 14, and then Nathan Evaldi, eight, pretty much falls off. And I thought, you know, Otani has a pretty nasty splitter, but maybe he didn't have a good feel for it last season because he didn't really get it going here. A couple guys working that, working that wild splitter. So the, all these pitchers will end up making their way onto my list for me to evaluate what those arsenals look like. Because then I want to kind of judge, who who do I want to buy? Who Who is a burgeoning ace? Who has the ace archetype that I'm looking for? And we touched on this last time. We're going to go into that baseball savant, that custom search. And I want to talk about changing these attack zones and looking at swinging strike. I think it's worth touching through each one. And then I want to show not, not just the number of swinging strikes incurred, because in the back of our minds, we have that inning accumulation issue. Who threw more pitches? So we can normalize that by checking on the rate. And we have that here. So do a custom search. Pitch result is swinging strike. Attack zone. Start with the heart. Player type is pitchers. Do a search there. What you'll see, and th this helps explain a little bit about the zone to be most effective in and what might be stickier year to year. Carlos Rodon, 122. This is in the heart. Swinging strikes. Rodon, Yu Darvish, Gilbert, Javier, Garrico, Otani, Castillo, Montgomery, Bassett, Tristan McKenzie. Sure. So these are guys that have some kind of pitch that they can come over the heart of the plate, right? Right across where that hitter wants to be. And he's just, whew, just whiffing over it. Whether that's cadence, surprising a guy, a lot of movement, you're gonna see that you're gonna see that variation in there. But the way we normalize it, we see Rodan here is at 4.1%. I've got to use the decimal point because it makes a difference. We're seeing some variation between mid twos, 2.6, up to 3.5. So the percentage of pitches that are in the heart that are swing and miss pitches are only 3-4%. This, this is not happening very much because hitters are good in the heart. That's what they want to swing at. At least, at least make some contact on it. We could look at foul balls, but I'm not really doing that. I want that whiff. And we get to see some numbers here. So just at the pitch percentage, Rodon is a 4.1, Darvish 3.5, Gilbert 
Javier 3.7, Otani 3.5. You can go down, somebody who maybe didn't do it as much, McClanahan, Joe Ryan, 3.4. So the rate is almost more important. Strider only had 81 over the heart swinging strikes, but for a 3.6, really pops out. Dylan Cease, only 2.6 in the heart. Woodruff, 3.1. So I probably want that 3 point something. You know, Verlander 2.9 is just there, so maybe I can come down to 2.9. Darvish, Kirby. And if the numbers dwindle off too much, which they do here, Michaelis, Josiah Gray, they, they didn't go enough. And, and their, their pitch percentage on swinging strike over the heart also drops off as well. Trevor Rogers 3.1. So you might be able to look a little bit deeper. That will normalize for innings and be able to handle it. But let's change the attack zone. If you click on the attack zone bar, you get a drop down. Hit clear for the group select. That'll leave. Hit shadow. Return to the search. It takes one second here. We can see just by number of swinging strikes in the shadow, it is beyond double. Dylan Cease, 239. Garrett Cole, 225. Alcantara, 221. Corbin Burns, 219. So 200 of these swinging strikes were occurring in the shadow on top of the ones in the heart. The pitch percentage varying between 7.7 for Cease, 6.8 for Alcantara, 7.8 for Gaussman, 8.1 for McClanahan. So, so eights is elite there. I, I don't think I've seen a nine, probably reserved for closers. For, got, for, you know, a, a few closers, I would guess maybe Diaz or Class A, 7.8, Bieber, 6.7. So what I really like here is as I go down, if I want that 7 point something plus, differentiating who can do that, Christian Javier, 7.3, Otani, 7.1, Strider, 8.1, Patrick Sandoval, 7.4, Carlos Rodon, 6.0. Only 6.0 for Carlos and we can try to come up with the theory where guys laying off, you know, were they just so scared of what he's throwing that he wasn't able to generate the, the kind of the whiffs in the shadow that, it, at least percentage-wise, and I know I'm really mincing the number here, but it's the only way to squeeze out who's going to really give you something next season. Sean Manaya, 7.1. Look at this. Hunter Green, 7.7. That really pops out. Blake Snell, 7. Max Scherzer, 7.6. Jeffrey Spriggs, 7.4. And then these guys fall off. I mean, Justin Verlander, 6.1. Okay, so 6 to 7 is good. But the stuff that's not as impressive is 5.6. Joe Musgrove, from Valdez, Tristan McKenzie, Chris Bassett, Alec Manoa, only 5.1. So not as amazing for the swing. Lance Lynn, way down there, 7.0 swinging strike percentage in the shadow and that'll help tease out because how would we find Lance Lynn if he didn't get the numbers of innings because he had the late start because he didn't get out for for a couple months and still see that when he got right yeah there it is Edwin Diaz 11.7 you know it's going to take a closer to really pop something like that Devin Williams 9.5 so we know that the swinging strike in the shadow, that percentage of times that it happens on those shadow pitches, is going to indicate some filthiness. And we'll be able to jump in as we look further into the archetype, how they are generating these kinds of swinging strikes in the shadow. And what I realized after going through this, although I really like the shadow, we're just going to clear the search again. We're going back into the attack zone. We're going to check on the chase. We're going to search it. What I really like is a lot of swing and miss total here. Here we go. So there's even less activity here. You can tell from the sheer number in the chase, guys are able to lay off. But I would say, in theory, who, who can generate a lot of chase swinging strike? That, that's important because that shows that you're, you're tempting guys. You might have gotten into good counts. You might have pitches that look like they're on the plate and move well off of it. You, you know, just where you're placing your offerings is important to look at. And here we have a Corbin Burns at the top, 4.2. Garrett Cole, 3.8. Gaussman, 4.0. 
Shane Bieber, 3.6. Dylan Cease, 3.3. Charlie Morton, Kyle Gibson, Logan Webb, 3.0. Aaron Nola, Robbie Ray, Otani. But just in the, the sheer number of times that it happens, we're back down to that 3%. So in the heart, we saw 3 to 4%. In the shadow, we're seeing that 6 7 8%. And then we're getting another 3, 3 to 4% in the chase. And I kind of left out the waste because hitters really aren't swinging at that. And I don't think it's significant. Carlos Rodon, 2.7. So who's really doing it? Let's just see who popped here. McClanahan, 3.2. David Peterson, a reliever. Corey Kluber, 3.2. Carrasco, 3.2. Anybody else jump out? Max Scherzer, 3.3. Still got it. So that's another thing to take a peek at there. There was one other thing on the one other thing on baseball savant before we dive into some individual pitchers and really, really break these guys down. On the leaderboards, pitch arsenal, pitch movement. Let me see. I think it's under pitch arsenals. We'll get the average speed. So baseball savant leaderboards, pitch arsenal, it's just four seamers, the sheer velocity. Have to know it. Let's just see some names here that we like. Johan Duran, closing for Minnesota, 100.8 straight cheddar. Class A, 99.9, the ched. Edwin Diaz up at 99. Hunter Green, 98.9 on the fastball. That's good to know. Jake DeGrom, 98.9. Gregory Soto was throwing hard, 98.4. That, that's not really what I came in here for. You can change from average speed, and you can switch over here to average spin. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the spin. I really think the most important thing on spin is avoiding spin rate drops. The spin rate drop is is a curse it is a kiss of death for the pitcher that season he will not get those spin rates up but let's just see who's really twirling a very tight spinning pitch and this is this is fringy i mean i, I don't really get a lot from this but sometimes it just shows that that pitch really stands out very tight spin makes it hard to pick up the pitch pick up the seams for pit, uh, hitters to diagnose so we'll just check on those spin rates and who do we get excited on the four-seamer? Corbin Burns, 25.78 on the spin rate. Musgrove, 25.59 with the high spin rate. Sonny Gray, Domingo Herman, Michael Kopech, 25.29 on the spin rate. So a good spin rate on a fastball, a high spin rate, doesn't tell at all. But 2,400 plus, Dylan Cease, 2,500. Uh, I saw Julio Urias, who has amazing spin rates across the arsenal. So you just get to see it there, but more more interested. The sinker isn't that good of a pitch. I'm not that concerned with the spin rates. It's really just Julio Urias spinning gems. Corbin Burns, Cease, good, good two-seamers. The cutter, Jose Leclerc, Sonny Gray. There's you Darvish spinning a 27.55 cutter, really breaking off a cutter. Total... Total wizardry by Yu Darvish from Valdez with the 26.73. Class A, Corbin Burns, Rasmussen, Lance Lynn with the 26.08. Spin rate, Musgrove, Kenley Jansen, Lance McCullers with the 25.67. So 2,500 plus, probably even 2,400. You got a pretty good spin rate on that, on that slider. I mean, that, that was just the cutter. I think we'll see the sliders... And the curves, who else do we want to see here on the slider? It's mostly closers, but Lance McCullers spinning a 28.58. Dylan Cease, 28.33. Corbin Burns, 2,800. So even more torque coming, even more arm break leading to even more revolution and spin on the ball. You get to see who's got something that's really probably dancing across the plate. You Darvish, 2,700. Some of these guys that have good, good spin rates. The changeup is a little more interesting. That it, it, You'll hear different things from different people. But the spin rate on the changeup, we either want very high or very low to get us the tumble. So that the spin rate application kind of goes both ways. You have to spin it both ways. I mean, Devin Williams with a 2,700 spin rate on the changeup. You know, that's probably more of a power change. 
Uh, not a lot of real popular names on the front side there. We have Mats, but you could look at the slow one. You know, we'll just skip off of that. Let's see the curve here. Ryan Presley, 32.72, maybe the highest. Ryan Presley breaking off a very tight corked curveball. Who else really pops out here? Charlie Morton, notorious for that curveball. Lance McCullers, 3 30-13 on the curveball. So I think Lance getting a year of health. I see some stuff from Lance that shows he really knows how to pitch well. Urias with a 29-14. So the curveball, we would expect to see some more spin on it. And we are seeing that from the rate. So those are some guys that are going to throw some good stuff there. We'll just take a peek at the splitter. Not many guys throw it. Let's just see who's up here. And Gaussman's right there at 1,500. Not a lot of revolution. A pitch that kind of falls off the table. So that's us looking at individual mix. That's us getting some names out there about who we're really looking at. But let's let's go back here. Let's discuss the archetype. And we're going to go pitcher by pitcher. Let me see how deep I can get. I'm looking at several things at the same time. Because I can't get blinded. I can't fall in love with swing and miss and ignore walk. And ignore home run ball. So we're kind of circling the wagons here a couple times. But it's, a lot of it is right on the baseball savant player page. Without going into the game logs, which is really another chapter. We look at Jake DeGrom. And the, the archetype is this. If you go to baseball savant and you come down to the plate discipline. Let me make sure we're on the right thing here. You got to scroll down. There's a lot to see on the base. Yeah, the plate discipline page. Zone contact, I want to see sub, zone contact sub 80%, sub 80%, 72, 74, 79, chase over 30%, whiff over 30%. That That's the line. That's the line that I'm looking for, that this guy probably has a chance of being an ace next season. Now, we're using DeGrom here, but De it's just going to show you how ridiculous DeGrom is. DeGrom has a 66.9 zone contact, a 37.8 chase, and a 41% whiff last season. Totally absurd. You can look at his percentile rankings. You'll see the red, the flush red across there because he's such a good pitcher. You can scroll up to the run values by pitch type. You can see, well, how did the run value go? Uh, his innings were limited, so that's going to limit how that plays. But it just shows that the forcing or the slide or the curveball were all effective. And then, of course, we get into the arsenal itself. That's found in the pitch tracking. On pitch tracking, I'm looking at a couple things. I want to see velocity on the fastball. The ground sitting 98.9. I want to look at batting averages per pitch. The ground point. 208 on the fastball, 0.139 on the slider, and 0.25 on the change. He's he's not hittable. He, you know, no one's going to hit well. No one's going to go well hitting 200 against the guy's free and easy 99. And you have to know when a guy sits 99 as an average, there's at least two miles per hour up, two miles per hour down for some reach back. So that's, that's a Jake who might touch 101 on some reach back. The spin rates are, are, are high, 2,500, 2,500. And then you take a peek at the whiff rates. So on a fastball, the whiff rate 25, you know, if, if the whiff rate is below 20, then that fastball is getting hit a little bit. If the whiff rate is up 23, 24, 25, then a the guy can just use the fastball. But what we'd like to see on the off-speed pitches, the rest of the arsenal is at least... Two pitches with a 40% whiff rate to get to the whiff. But look at DeGrom here. A 28.9% whiff on the fastball. 53.8% on the whiff. A change a changeup 45% and a curveball at 42%. So DeGrom, DeGrom is throwing, it looks like four plus pitches with the slider and the change being plus plus. I mean the curveball he doesn't use much. He threw only 48 of them to lefties, but but why would he have to? Why does it matter? He can go fastball slider 
to the tune of 208 and point one three nine, and just mow down hitters and just leave them with, with nothing. So that's how Jake DeGrom is working there. Totally ridiculous. The only thing that will stop him is health. Let's check on a Garrett Cole. Because I, I wanted to start from the top. I worked through these guys. I started to see who, who is really well into the archetype. Before we move down into the borderline guys, just looking at arm and stuff and arsenal. And, and DeGrom is going to be in there. So we're going to just check on his plate disciplines. You know, it, it, no no one's touching the ground. So we're gonna get a little. We're gonna get into more human ranges here. Garrett Cole, seventy six point eight zone contact, thirty two percent chase, thirty three point nine percent whiff. He's an ace. That's that's an ace right there. Whatever else you want to check on, you can take peaks. You can take a peek at the run value. I'm just gonna leave the run value out of this. You know where to look. It's all broken down on the player page. He's got a four seamer and a slider that are both working. But let's look at how the stuff played year to year. Garrett's still throwing 97.8 with the fastball, 28.9% whiff there. The slider's got a 44% whiff. Throwing a five pitch mix in here. He does throw everything even down to the cutter. The whiff rates 44.2, 36.9. I mean, 30.7 isn't amazing but that is a very good whiff rate 31.8 on the cutter a very good whiff rate what are the batting averages here 0 0.221 0 0.160 oh the curveball 0.261 you know that's that's okay it's not good for degrom but okay the change up 0.194 so he's suppressing batting average with the entire arsenal with the five pitch mix i'm just going to throw it in there now about mix pitchers that have a broad mix four pitches that they really throw, five pitches that they really throw. We have to give them a little bump up for having so much stuff, for being able to keep hitters off balance, because what will happen with the fastball slider guys that don't have the third pitch or the fourth pitch? Hitters will see the curve. Hitters will see the bend in the pitch and, and eventually maybe be able to catch up and make contact two, three, four times through the order. But if a guy has a lot of mix, he gets through the first time, the second time, all of a sudden the cutter comes out, the changeup comes out, and it, it keeps it keeps hitters off balance. There's a lot of guys that work work in more mix than they do just power dominant stuff. But today we're really looking at dominance. Obviously, Garrett Cole's an ace. The issue, the issue, I'm just gonna go back, and that's where in the back of our minds we got the baseball savant open, and we see that Garrett Cole. Gave up 1.48 home run per nine. And so he, he does give up the long ball from time to time. There's some other guys that suppress it a little better. So there, there will be totally filthy gems, but there might be the occasional little little blow up, little hiccup from time to time. But you're you're buying Garrett Cole with confidence. Total, total utter confidence. Who do we got here? Corbin Burns. Right, right away when you get into that baseball savant, just look at where those red bars are. You, Corbin Burns is a total ace, 28 years old, 6'3", right in his prime. Does he fit the ace archetype? Absolutely. A little closer, zone contact, 79.6, sub 80. The chase is 33.5. The whiff is 35.2. So he's right there. If... If the zone contact is up a little bit, what I need is to get the chase up a little bit. And the whiff is really a summary of how the arsenal broke down and how much swing and miss he was generating. But the numbers are there that Corbin Burns is absolutely in an elite tier of being an ace. Purchase with confidence. Let's check out the arsenal. So Corbin is leading cutter, 95 mile an hour cutter, 2600 on the spin, 27.8 whiff percentage and then he offers oh my goodness it's four other plus pitches a curveball with a 47 percent whiff a changeup with a 46 percent whiff a slider with a 49 percent whiff he also throws a sinker and throws a four seamer with a little more giddy up on him for 96 miles an hour the batting averages are sparkling 2.13 1.27 0.222, 0.160, the sinker, 0.250. I, I still do not know why these guys are throwing the sinkers, but they just can't let it go. 
and the four seam fastball got hit a little bit. He doesn't throw much of it. So, I mean, it's still more of a four pitch mix, but four of the pitches are plus plus, and he gets behind a cutter that's very hard to deal with. Corbin Burns is a total stud. What just to check on, I just want to see what his home run per nine or his walks were. Corbin Burns walks 2.27 is fine. The home runs hanging out at about one with a 24% K to BB ratio. Everybody knows Corbin's going to be there. You're going to have to be there too, buying with confidence. So we keep going here. Who, you know, and, and now, I mean, everybody knew those guys, and now it's going to get a little bit more interesting about who will I put up in this elite tier. We have a Shane McClanahan. 25 years old, standing just 6'1". The the red meters fully to the right. The fastball spin down a little bit. Let's check on Shane's plate discipline to see if he fits fits the mold. 74.4 zone contact, 32% chase, 34% whiff. Shane McClanahan is an ace. Absolutely. How does he get there? Well, he's sitting 96.7 miles an hour with the Ched. He did give up 10 home runs. The batting average is .244, but still, that, that thing is throwing it hard, a 24% whiff, and he's got a plus changeup, 44% whiff rate on the change, throwing it primarily to righties, a curveball with a 28% whiff rate, and then a filthy, filthy slider with 46% whiff rate. So Shane McClanahan is going to get it done again, Fastball, changeup, curve slider, two plus plus pitches, and he's going to be right there. And the thing with Shane is that the walks are fairly tidy. I'm not going to jump back. You guys can compare the walks. I'm going to keep moving through these guys because some of these guys get a little bit more interesting, a little more exciting. I'm going to take a look at Spencer Strider. What, who are we looking at? I looked at some film of Spencer Strider. His follow through is a leg whip it whips across the mound there's so much follow through such a unique throwing motion the 24 year old the only thing i'd be concerned with is the health with great velocity comes great injury risk but spencer strider splashed onto the scene what i see from this guy is a power power arsenal getting ready to tear the league up next season i'm going to own some spencer strider Hands down, right now, absolutely. Let's let's check the archetype. Zone contact, 73.4. Chase, 30.9. Whiff, 34.9. Spencer Strider, already an ace. But when we look at the stuff, we get to see a guy who just... what What is this arsenal? He's sitting 98.2 with the four-seamer for a 27% whiff rate. He can sit on that. The slider has a 52% whiff rate. The changeup has a 47.5% whiff rate. It's plus plus. They're both plus plus pitches. He could just sit fastball and just pump cheddar. It's a dominant, overpowering pitcher. He went he the year before in 2021. You can see he was fastball slider. He added the changeup, which is effective. What if he adds a pitch? You know, what what happens then? Will these numbers come down after the league has a chance to adjust and see him? I don't know, but come down to what? He's at 52.2% whiff on the slider. If he comes down to 42, it's still a plus pitch. So Spencer Strider absolutely cannot be ignored. I, I know that the conservative nature of fantasy baseball is going to have people wanting to wait a little bit for a Spencer Strider. We're not going to be making that kind of mistake. We're going to be buying aggressively because we're evaluating the arm. We're evaluating how he's going to attack the zone and he's in it. He's going to attack it hard. We have Dylan Cease here, 27 years old. We all know the story. This is how we this is how we made our bread and butter last season, boys. Dylan Cease. Burgeoning ace. Totally, totally blows up last season. Is he an ace? Is does he fit the archetype? Let's see. Zone contact, 76.2. Chase 31.3. Whiff 33.2. It's all there. The Arsenal, and that's the other, I mean, the reason I go to the Arsenal, I really, I need to see the Velos. We have a little bit interesting story here with Dylan. So let's start in 2021. Dylan 
lead four seam fastball. When I say lead, I mean making it his primary pitch, the pitch he threw most often. 96.7. And here we see a whiff rate of 23%. So that's not the 27% that we had for the first three, four pitchers there. It's down a little bit. So maybe he can't sit there. But we knew from last season the slider was a 50% whiff. The curveball was a 40% whiff. The change had a 47% whiff. So he had these other dominant plus pitches. What does spent what does Dylan Cease go and do last season? He leads slider. He says, My elbow's feeling healthy. Nobody can hit it. So he has a 43% whiff rate on the slider for a batting average of 0.128, shutting down hitters giving them nothing to work with, helping the helping the four seamer with its only 23%, you know, and that probably comes down to movement that he's not really getting the whiff. The curveball came back to reality, 28% whiff rate, the changeup 34% whiff rate. So he wasn't able to sustain the monstrous whiff rates that he had in 2021, but he's still leading with the plus plus pitch, has another plus pitch in the arsenal, and the other the four seamer is not bad. It's at least very hard. So we'll have to see what Cease does. Am I concerned he's throwing mostly sliders? A little bit, you know, because of arm health and because of the 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 workload and the torques that are put on throwing a slider. But some guys are doing it. Some guys are switching over. They said, you know what? I've got to hide this fastball a little bit. I'm not just going to pump these in there. And so they're leading with some other more plus pitch. And those results are working. If the guy can keep throwing it and it can't be hit, lead with that pitch. We're going to see some more adjustments from that. Max Scherzer. Where am I concerned with Max? 38 years old. That's where my concern is. You know, I'm, th I'm thinking about health. You're looking at innings. You're looking for guys that have done it before and can do it again. And uh, the healthy elbow, I mean, we're seeing pitchers mature. They're, they can pitch. I mean, Scherzer has been good all through his 30s. So that's like six years of him in his 30s. I think the difference is... With the older pitchers after age 32, 3, 4, other, other parts of the body can get injured. The knee can get injured. The oblique can get injured. They become a little bit more susceptible to not just arm-related fatigue, forearm, elbow, shoulder. They open themselves up more to other issues in the body, other things that want to go. But if Scherzer, I mean, this is a determined competitor who I'm sure doesn't think he's done yet is going to want to come out and prove some people wrong next season for the Mets. And let's see, let's check on his archetype here, zone contact, 78.5. Chase, 34%. That was his career high with a 30% whiff, which was actually low for him, but he really was getting guys out of the zone. Scherzer is still going to be an ace, obviously. He's flashing five picks, pitch mix. The fastball... I'm going to say only 94 compared to what we just saw with the velocities from those other power pitchers. But 94 works. We know going back from our days with Eno Saris and Sleeper in the Bus that there's a an effective velocity crossover from like 93 to 94 miles an hour where you start to get the guesswork going up over 94. It starts to have slightly diminished returns. So here's a Scherzer. 23% whiff on the fastball. Nothing was hittable. 0 0.212, 0 0.183, 0 0.224, 0 0.20, 0 0.225. So sure, nothing can get hit for the Shurs. The slider's plus plus with a 46% whiff. The changeup, okay, he throws it. The, the cutter's got a 37.6% whiff, it's plus. And he sprinkles in a curveball. So Scherzer's using mix, he's got swing and miss. He's got, a, he's got enough velocity. He's got enough oomph on it to make it work. An ace, draft with confidence. Carlos Rodon, 6'3". I love the mechanics. Rodon was hurt a little bit early in his season. We've always known that he's had a wipeout slider. And, and he's really, it all came together. Earned himself a contract to go play for the Yankees next season. The archetype. Zone contact, sub-80, yes, 76%. Chase. Over 30, yes, 31.2%. With over 30, yes, 31%. So again, not as huge and gaudy as some of the other players, but it, it's there. 
It's all there for Rodon. Let's check the mix. Carlos came in throwing 95.5 on the hard stuff with a 27.9 whiff rate. And we saw from the four seam information on the run value stuff that Rodon can just work hard fastball. And then you got the slider, 39% whiff. He's sprinkling in some curveball, sprinkling in some change with the 50% whiff. He was unhittable, 0 0.213, 0 0.193. The curveball, 0 0.0838. So there's there's a primarily fastball slider, Carlos Rodon, who was just mowing hitters down, keeping them off balance. Absolute ace. We're going to get back in there. Brandon Woodruff. Brandon Woodruff, I mean, sometimes gets slept on a little bit because Corbin Burns getting all the credit over there in Milwaukee. But don't we're not going to sleep on Brandon Woodruff. Hopefully the prices do. 76.4 on the zone contact, 31.4 on the chase, 31% on the whiff, his career high. As he's finding more whiff than usual, getting better, getting better, wanting to progress, wanting to be better year after year. Brandon Woodruff is 29 years old. He's getting into his prime. He's 10 years younger than Max Scherzer. So he's got some he's got some room to grow still. He's still figuring out his stuff. Leads with the 96 mile an hour fastball for a 28% whiff. That, that's where it all is going to start. He's got a sinker here. I don't know why he's throwing it. 15% whiff. The batting average is 269. The, the issue that I'm seeing, the only thing I can see here is that the four-seamer, although the batting average is better, he gave up 11 bombs on it. The sinker only gave up two bombs. He threw it less. Relatively, it would have been four bombs. So maybe there's a chance when, when players are on base, they got to throw that sink in there because they can't have some got somebody take them yard. And so they'd rather give up a hit. Maybe they're grounding into double plays. There's probably a reason for this that I can't exactly see, but it's not the swing and miss stuff. But here's a changeup, 86 mile an hour changeup. So there's your 10 mile an hour differential from 96.3 to 86.1. Very good for a 54% whiff rate. Oh my God. Plus plus on the change. The curve has a 25% whiff rate. The slider has a 45% whiff rate. That's also plus. Brandon Woodruff has it all working for him. Do, do not sleep because he's not the sexiest name in the bin. Total stud, Shane Bieber. You know, Bieber taking a little bit of a step back. We've seen that the K rates aren't there. We're going to check in on him here on the archetype. Here's where I get concerned. I, I think I put him in here because he's done it so well before, and I think we see a better Shane next season. <clears throat> but we see what Shane was missing. Zone contact, 83.9. No, 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 Shane. That's not high enough, so... From what he did last season, it's down a little bit. But if you take a peek back to 2020 to 2021, both pretty good seasons, 77 on the zone, 78 in 2021. The chases, 34, 31, 31. The whiffs from 40 to 36, 29.7. So it's a shame Beaver that regressed a little bit, but it's a shame Beaver that really has been there for a while. He's 27 years old. I want to give him the benefit of the doubt. Here, here's the issue. You can you can almost see the breakdown in the year to year. That's why we have to evaluate these guys for their story, for their progression, to what they're getting through. Shane Bieber, 2021, 92.8 on the fastball. Shane Bieber, 2022, 91.3 on the fastball. That's a that's a problem. A mile and a half when you're only working sub 93. That, that makes me nervous. The whiff rate went from 22.8 to 15.1. So you see a fastball really drop off for Biebs. He even lost a 130 on the spin rate. Do we have an arm breaking down this here? Was there some dead arm phase? But the slider has a 39% whiff. The curveball with a 40% whiff. The batting averages were good, except the fastball was not good. It just, he couldn't get it done. He was giving up 0.292 on the fastball. But can he bounce back with the with the other two pitches? Certainly. He'd be a guy to watch early to see where the fastball was, where the whiff rates were, how how well he comes out. But at 27 years old, it's worth mentioning, just not quite all the way there the way we want him. So we're digging down a little further here. I want to keep going through these guys. 
Shohei Otani. Don't don't let Shohei don't let Shohei's hitting pitching pitching the whole thing like don't let it distract you. Shohei is an elite pitcher and an elite hitter. We just have to accept that. Everything is there for the 28 year old 6'4". The stuff is so dirty. Let's check the archetype. Zone contact, 76.9. The chase, dare I say only 28.4. Yes, the whiff, only 28. The whiff the two seasons before was 35 and 32 respectively. So he wasn't inducing as much whiff last season as he would, but... You know, did he fit the ace archetype perfectly? Not not perfectly with some of the other guys we saw, but a very good pitcher nonetheless. Checking on the arsenal here on what Otani is really using to, to get get it done. It's up here a little. Oh, you know, it's tricky. We got to switch. I'm, I'm getting the batter. Getting there. I'm like, where are the pitches? Because you got to switch over to pitching on the Savant. This was harder to do a season ago, but they cleaned it up. Actually, let me go down because if that was the batter, maybe that was the wrong. Okay, here we go. So it's the reverse plate discipline for Otani. 76.9, 28% of the chase, but the whiff was a 33%. So he was nasty enough. It shows that he was really getting it done. So what I, what I like here from Otani, this is interesting, another guy. In 2021, he's got a four-seam fastball sitting 95.6. A slider with a 31% whiff. The split finger with a 48% whiff. Last season, he just starts leading slider. 38% whiff rate. He's leading with it. The batting average, 159. If they can't hit it, keep throwing it. The four-seamer was getting touched at .281. The whiff rate is not good at 20%. So I'm guessing this is Shohei being just a little straight with the fastball. But then he's got the splitty. Plus plus at 48.8%. Also flashing a mix, cutter, curveball, sinker with the curveball with a 42% whiff. So, I mean, this, this, I mean, it, with that kind of mix, I mean, six pitch mix, Darvish, Burns come to mind, guys that are using everything, Scherzer. Otani is going to be a total stud. But what I really like on the four seamer from 95.6 last year. Up to 97.3, so he found some juice. Will Otani find more juice? I'm not sure, but Otani is very hard to hit. I'm drafting with total confidence as a starting pitcher. We're just going to go a little long here because I think I need to power through some additional names. If you need to take a right, you're seeing how I'm going through the breakdown here. But these are my guys. We've got to get through starters. We're probably a day away from jumping over, looking at just straight up prices and seeing how prices are going to work their way back into who we're missing. So who do we have here next? Shohei, we got blocks, Block A Snell. Snell started off slow, got it going later in the season. I just want to check if he's fitting the archetype. Zone contact 77.8, chase 30.6 with 32.8. So Blake Snell still has it. Still has it going. I don't think you should just suddenly ignore him on a good Padres team looking to get wins next season. Maybe he'll settle in. How did the stuff look? 95.8 on the fastball. Fastball actually up half a tick from the year before. Whiff rate on it, not great. But the slider, the curveball, and the change all with plus plus whiff rates 46, 43, 45 respectively. Really was not getting hit. Nothing was getting hit. Blake's problem is being walky at times. I wonder if I can jump over. I don't want to go back to fan graphs because of the way the screens are set up. But Blake is looking. Blake has a stuff. And I think even if some owners are a little bit tempered on him, if you look at his season-long numbers, it's not going to pop off the page. But Blake is very good. I want to check on a Robbie right here. 31 years old. Has a career year. Goes over to Seattle. Is, is Robbie Ray an ace? Robbie, you tell me. Zone contact, 78%. Chase, 31%. Whiff, 30%. And that's a low whiff for Robbie, who's been 32% most of his career. The arsenal, you know, I'm not happy to see a fastball that was 94.8 down to 93.4, about a tick and a half. The whiff rates are still okay. 
at 25%. It's the slider getting him 39% whiffs. The curveball's basically been shelved. So we got a guy throwing fastball, slider with some sinker. But the fastball and the slider are very good. 0.224 batting average against 0.184 on the slider. So Robbie Ray will be decent, but not not phenomenal. Let's get a little cute here. Hunter Green, 6'5", 23 years old. A lot of guys getting excited. I just wrote Hunter Green all season last season. I, I know he was getting blown up, blowing up my ear right, left and right. But the occasional gem, the occasional gem in the playoffs was just really loving the hard, the hard throwing Hunter Green here. Zone contact, 75.3. The chase, 28.3, just under. The whiff, 31.9. So Hunter Green just knocking at the door of ace hood. What does he throw? The 98.9 fastball for a 28% whiff with the slider with a 38% whiff. So it's a plus fastball. It's a plus slider. Sprinkles in some changeup to lefties. The lefties are hitting the changeup. It's not very good. So we'll have to look for an evolution from Hunter Green. But when you're just making guys guess on straight 99 gas, as the control improves, maybe a pitch is added on, Hunter Green could be very, very scary here in a very short period of time. I'm going to be owning some Hunter Green for cheap. And is it a risky play? Sure. You know, will, will there be some blow-ups? Would it make me nervous? Maybe. But I just, I love gas. I love the hard stuff. So we're going to be getting some of that. The Gaussman, 32 years old. Ga Gaussman has a very unique profile, basically, because of that splitter. Zone contact, 79.8. But here's where it's just so silly. A chase of... 39.8 yes i read that 39.8 the whiff 29.4 so gaussman's an ace i mean he's in there what is he doing it with the fastball is not good 16 percent whiff rate that's that's not very good the batting average against is 0.333 it's not good but the split he's got a 44 percent whiff rate for a 0.192 batting average against the slider wasn't great 36 percent whiff rate change up 31 percent whiff rate so Gausman's not the perfect pitcher. He leaves a little something to be desired on the fastball. Let me check the velos. He was up to 95, so it's still hard. Home runs only gave up eight. It's getting hit a little bit, but the, the, that chase number, I mean, it, it, it's just the splitter falling off the table that he's got a really premium, premium kind of specialty pitch. But I'm sure it's going to continue to give the league's fits, league fits and get him some wins. Sandy Alcantara, a little bit different guy here. Not as flashy, not as swing and missy, and that'll that'll bear out in the numbers here. The zone contact, 80.8%. The chase, 34.7. That's up a little bit, but the whiff, only 25.4. You got to like Alcantara again this season. You may not get the Ks, but on the other hand, if he's going deep in games, if it's always six, seven, eight innings, he will accumulate those Ks over time. But just look at the stuff here. We're going to look at the evolution here for Sandy. In 2021, a 97.6 mile an hour sinker. A slider, a change up, the whiff rates, the sinker was not good. The slider had a 38% whiff. We liked it. What does Sandy do the next season? He says, you know what? I'll lead change up 91.8. It carries the 34% whiff. Nobody can touch it. The batting average against is 0.145. If they can't hit it, keep throwing it. Sandy, leading change up. The fastball ticked up to 98. So now you're you're guessing. I mean, if you're you're chasing this Bugs Bunny change up all over the plate, and then he's just pumping 98 down the barrel for a batting average of 0.235. I mean, he's got a sinker. The slider's got a 31% whiff. The cur the slider is actually decent, 31%. Not a plus pitch, but a good pitch, an out pitch that he can use. I mean, Sandy's filthy. 27 years old at 6'5"? Sandy's mechanics are filthy. He's going to continue to be dominant again this season. If you can get your hands to some Alcantara, you have nothing to fear there. Aaron Nola, 6'2", 29 years old. And where am I with Aaron? You know, I don't draft a lot of Aaron. Everyone is always very high there. I've never been in love with the mix. But again, last season he showed, no, I am Aaron Nola. And I am here to, to stay and to, to make my impact. 
And Aaron had a nice season last season. Is he an ace? 80.8 on the zone. Okay. Chase got it up to 34%. The whiff, 27.9%. So that that's a nice chase number. What is Aaron using? We know there's going to be some curveball in here, so we're going to check on what he's got going. The four-seamer sits 92.8. That That's that's my issue with Aaron. That's where I don't get that excited. It's just not hard enough for me. I don't want to be spending that kind of premium top capital without just having something a little bit more overpowering. But the whiff rates were good, 24%. There's the curveball, plus plus, 39% whiff rate. The batting averages, 0.196, curveball, 0.219, sinker, 0.178. The changeup was getting mashed, 0.319. So Nola using five pitches, it, it, it got it done. You know, a nice little pitcher. I'm just going to kind of move along here. I checked on a Freddy Peralta who got injured. What has Freddy got here? Zone contact 76%, chase 27%, whiff 29%, so not quite there. Will he come back healthy? The four seam reset 92.6, down a little bit from 93.4, but we know that Freddie's kind of a tricky, tricky pitcher to to keep track of because he's using different speeds. He's changing the velocity of his fastball. It's weird to see him averaging 92.6 there because I've seen him reach back to 97. So Freddie's kind of his own guy. The whiff rate's 24.9 and the fastball is decent. He's got four other, two other plus pitches. The curveball, 37% whiff. The changeup, 37% whiff. And a slider with a 37% whiff that was better in 2021. May have something to do with the injury. I still think Freddie Prowls is a very good pitcher. The health is a concern for us, of course. Let's check on the magician, Yu Darvish. 36 years old. The guy just keeps doing it year after year. Can't forget about him. Not the perfect pitcher. Not the most dominant guy, but he's always there. Zone contact, 81%. Chase, 30%. Whiff, down to 25%. So it wasn't the best Darvish we've ever seen. Darvish leading cutter, 86%. Really hard spin on it for a 25% whiff. So nothing is that spectacular in Darvish's arsenal. The cutter, 25% whiff. The four-seamer, 21% whiff. Not very good. But the batting average is good. The slider, 26. The sinker, 15. He's got a split finger with a 39% whiff. But what we're seeing really from Darvish is the batting averages. Four-seamer, 0.17. Slider, 0 0.160. Sinker, 0 0.169. Split finger, 0.138. They couldn't touch him. You can't touch him. So there's something about the metrics, about the pitcher, that we may not see it specifically in the whiff rate. We do see it in the breadth of the arsenal, but it really shines in the batting average that Darvish is a beast. And the fastball sits 95. So we're never going to forget about him there. It just depends on health. How's he going to do? You know, 36 years old. Darvish is going to be the real deal again. Let's check on the Justin Verlander. 39 years old. 6'5". Did Verlander go ace on us last season? 81% zone contact. Chase 32.2. With 24.2. So not, not perfect. Not perfect in the prototype. What was he using here? Arsenal-wise? I've got to get a refresh here because it didn't come up. So, you know, Verlander is a tricky guy because so somehow Verlander's pitch tracking is just not going to give me the breakdown here today. So we can skip over. Oh, there it is. It loaded up. Verlander obviously out for a year, comes back, four-seam fastball, sitting 95, still got the good stuff. The whiff only 18%. Slider, curveball change, 34%, 24%, 38%. Batting averages were untouchable, 0 0.194, 0 0.188, 0 0.158, 0 0.167. So Verlander couldn't be hit. Everything he threw was all working, all locating, keeping the walks down. The fastball is 95. I, I think Verlander's an ace just because his mechanics are so good. Just a slightly different type of player than we're used to. Max Freed. And so, you know, the deficiencies will pop out on these guys. Max Freed, 
83% zone contact. So that, that takes Max out of there. Max isn't right there for me as a true 1A ace because the zone contact gets hit a little bit. How does he clean it up for me? A 34% chase. The whiff only 25.9, 26. So while well, Max Fried is a very good pitcher, will he come on and be dominant next season? I'm not sure. I see a fastball with only a 40% whiff. He's sitting 94 with the hard stuff. The curveball way down at 74% for a 40% whiff rate. That's his bread and butter pitch. Plus, plus, 0.174 batting average against. The slider was decent. The changeup was decent. 28% whiff, 36% whiff, respectively. And he throws some sinkers. So it's a five-pitch mix from Max Fried. Age-wise, 29 years old, 6'4", had a good season. We're going to look forward to what he's putting together again next season. Zach Gallen started off injured, 27 years old. It was just seeing some other things from Zach that made me want to look at what he was doing. I'll do his arsenal first. Sits 94, you know, doesn't knock my socks off. Curveball, 33% whiff, change of 25% whiff. The whiff rates came down for a Zach Gallen. And so you can see as I move down the list that this stuff is diminished. Do I, do I love Zach Gallen? No, not really. Zone contact, 85%. That's not going to do it. The chase, 31%. The whiff, 23%. We can't have those numbers start to shift. I can't have your zone contact go well up over 80. Your whiff start dropping below 30. And then your, I mean, your chase down below 30. And then your whiff below 30. You're, you're starting to be hittable. And you're not generating me enough K. So Zach Gallen doesn't really excite me there. But some of these guys work a little differently. So here's Logan Gilbert. 6'6", 25 years old. Going to draw some excitement. Going to be some hype around Logan Gilbert this season, I'm sure. Are we buying it, really, is the question. Zone contact, 79.8. Chase, only 25.8. Whiff, only 24.2. So we're not going to misconstrue where Logan Gilbert is in the rankings. But he does show some swing and miss, a good little pitcher. The four-seamer, I like seeing a guy tick up from 95 to 96. He found some velo. The whiff is 23%, and he found some whiff. The slider, 25%. The curveball, 23%. The changeup, 31%. All good pitches. Not plus pitches, but good whiff rates. But just Logan Gilbert being young and big. Were the spin rates good? No, the spin rates are not spectacular, so... Logan should be good. The thing with the younger pitchers is will they advance? Will he find more? You know, if Logan starts working 97 this season, finds another tick, I'm sure that everything comes together pretty well for him. Here's a guy I'm pretty high. He's a different kind of pitcher. Julio Urias, 26 years old, 6 feet tall, not a big guy, but a very sound pitcher. A lot of control for Urias. Fastball dipped a mile per hour from 2021 to 2022. He's down from 94 to 93. We don't love that. None of the whiff rates are good. 23%, 21%, 30, 20, not good. But it's in the batting averages. 0 0.189, 0 0.2, 0 0.206, 0 0.33, 0 0.33 on the sometimes thrown sinker. So there's an Urias working fastball, curveball change. It's, Oh, not hit. You can't hit him. He's 0.200 batting average against. You can't hit it. The reason is you can't see it. He's got 25-21 spin rate on the fastball. An elite 29-14 spin rate on the curve. Even the, the sinker has a 25-32 on the sinker. So he's hiding his pitches. He's locating his pitches very well. Do we touch on the plate discipline? We might not have seen it. So the zone contact, 81.8. Eh, 32.2 on the chase. We like it, but the whiff isn't there. The guy's just not swinging and missing enough. The whiff only 23%. But we've seen in previous seasons, that's a league worse. That's a career worse for Urias on the whiff. So maybe the whiff comes back up. Maybe he does something a little bit differently. Because if somebody can do something differently... It probably would be an Urias. Could he get that velo back so that the fastball wasn't so hittable? It, will he will he mix in a pitch 
you know, will, will, will there be some adjustment? It's very possible because he's so young and he's so good at spinning the baseball. I mean, spin, 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 Uriah. So we'll see what the market really is like for him there. And these are the last I got. Seven more guys here. Just you can't forget some of the old guys. Luis Castillo, 30. Let's just go down. We'll take the Arsenal this time. 97.1 with the four-seamer with the 33% whiff. He had a nice little four-seamer going last season. He's got a bad sinker, 0.277 against. Not sure why he throws it. Gave up more home runs than the sinker than he did the four-seamer. Changeup has a 26% whiff. Slider had a 36% whiff. So the whiffs weren't spectacular for Castillo. But he's right there. He's towing the line, 79.2 zone contact, 29.9 on the chase, 27.8 on the whiff. Castillo will be very good. Will he make a jump to the next level of number one ace? I'm not so sure because we're just not getting enough swing and miss from him. But a very good pitcher who probably is going to be a little bit devalued a little bit lower price this season coming to a slight discount the batting averages were okay Luis Castillo he's out right there Christian Javier 25 years old 6-1 fairly small but I liked what he was doing from a swinging strike perspective zone contact 76 chase 28 with 30.4 so very close I mean Javier's chase the last three years 23.6 24.5 28. He's generating more chase. The whiff has already been there. What's Javier using? Javier sitting 93.8 with the fastball. Okay, 27.3% whiff. That's a good fastball that he can get behind. The batting average, 0.183. Very nice. Slider, 39% whiff rate for a 0.121 batting average. Fastball slider, keep throwing it, Christian. 30% whiff rate on the curve. Yes, sir, with a very tight spin rate. So I see Christian Javier even sprinkles in a little change to lefties for a 26% whiff rate. So I see a very good Christian Javier. That's where you might want to go back to his game logs and just check out his durability, how deep he was going into games. But I think he's going to be a surprisingly good pitcher this season for somewhat cheap. Lancey Lynn, 35 years old, 6'5". Guy knows how to pitch. Four-seamer sat only 93, down a little bit, but a 33% whiff rate on the fastball. The batting average was .203. So Lance can just get behind that fastball and pump it. The cutter, the sinker, nothing else was plus. Six-pitch mix for Lance. Archetype-wise, 77.9 on the zone, 30% on the chase. The whiff up to 28.5, so he's, he's kissing the line there. I mean, those are some nice numbers from Lance Lynn. Would we like to see more strikeout stuff? Certainly. But he's going deep into games. The batting averages are okay, except for the sinker, which is bad. You know, where will Lance Lynn be? I don't think Lance is going to change dramatically as a pitcher next season. It'd be nice for him to come in healthy and stay healthy at 35. But definitely a good pitcher there. Logan Webb, Ranger Swap. We'll just we'll just do the, the exciting. Let's just see Alec Manoa here, and then we'll wrap this thing up. Alec Manoa, play discipline. 82% zone contact, 30% chase, 24% whiff. Alec actually went a little bit differently from 2021, where the zone contact was better, the whiff was better. Let's see what happened with the arsenal here. We have a fastball 93.9. Not not overpowering. Even just because he's bigger doesn't mean that fastball is any harder. But I love the way the guy competes on the mound. But the whiff rate, 26% on the fastball. Batting average against 0.211. So velocity is not the only thing. You gotta look at that batting average against. If it's 97 and straight as a pin, it's gonna get crushed. If it's 94. And it's got some tail, it's got some some rise on it, it's got some run. You know, you could the batting average can come and clean it all up. And then a slider with a 31% whiff rate. I mean, Manoa had slightly better whiff rates on the slider the year before, but he's just so young, 25 years old, 6'6. Six, six. I look for a guy in the offseason to come back very strong, very solid. You can see from where the arsenals are landing in the zone that he's got good control.
and just a just a competitor. Tristan McKenzie, 25 years old, 6'5". A guy we liked, but we might have been a touch early on. Sort of got it all together last season. 81.9 81, 81 in the zone, not perfect. But the chase at 32%. The whiff at just 26.7%. Not perfect for us. Not true ace archetype. We like seeing the velo tick up from 92.1 up to 92.5. The whiff only 19%, the slider whiff 27%, the curveball whiff 45%, and he throws it a good amount. I mean, you'd almost like to see more curveball with the .120 batting average against. The slider getting touched a little bit for .27 against, gave up nine homers on it, but still generated a little bit of a whiff. The fastball whiff percentage is not great, but the batting average against is 0.203 so he can sit on that I mean Tristan has shown some flashes we'll have to see what we get from him again next season and so that's that's a lot about how I dive in to check on the mix to check on are those percentages matching up enough for me we're gonna leave it there I probably would have gone into more game logs because what I will do going through the pitchers on baseball savant Jump over to fan graphs and just peek at, you know, let's see. This is this is the mystery we're unraveling. If we sort by FIP, fielding, independent, pitching. We'll see Rodan, Gausman, Otani, but then we see Verlander, Nola, Freed, Bieber, Alcantara, Jose Quintana even. All, all flashing very high in the FIP. You wonder, I mean, how do they do it? Well, it's it's home run suppression all significantly sub one on the home runs. Logan Webb, 0.51 home run suppression. Zach Gallon, 0.73. You know, these most elite pitchers, Otani, we were wondering, Verlander, why is it so good? We're not seeing the swing and mix stuff. The walk rate, 0.149. Nola's walk rate, 0.127. Freed, Bieber, 1.55. Bieber, 1.62. So, that walk component comes in. Now, what will we be drafting? I mean, I'm obviously, I'm drafting more towards Ks, but I can't ignore the guys over here that have very strong FIPS, that have low walk rates, and the reason that they're doing it and getting it done, because these guys will will throw some gems from time to time. And then when I jump over to fan graphs like that, let's just, let's just do one picture here. Let's just do, who do we do? Let's do Verlander. No, let's do someone I'm going to draft. Let's do McClanahan. Just to show you how the game logs work, and we'll probably circle back to this in another session, but if I click on Shane, give it a second to bring it up, you're going to go down Season Stats, two tabs in, you hit that game log. And this is where I'm really trying to digest a pitcher and get a feel for him. On the game log itself, I'm looking at innings pitched. I want to see some six, seven, six. Sure, certainly went deep enough. He tired a little bit at the end of the year. Five, five, four, five, six. Didn't go that deep. I'm looking at ER earned runs. Were there blow ups? You know, mid season, one, two, one, 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 two. Was not giving up runs. Those are six innings of one, seven, seven, six, six, seven. He was just cruising. He gave up four, four runs to Detroit. He closed the season. Houston got him for five. Toronto got him for four. And the and Houston got him again for only two. So how did those go? You could take a peek at the walks. So I'm trying to look for the depth and the quality of the game. But on the dashboard, slide over and hit the tab, pitch type. And what I look for here is the variance. I mean, pitch type-wise, we get to see the fastball velocity. We get to see the percentages of what a guy is throwing. Shane throws a split finger. I mean, maybe I didn't catch that exactly, but I'm seeing McClanahan throw a split finger fastball. We'll have to double check on that. But things come and go. You know, you see a slider. You know, he gets the Yanks. He throws it 25% of the time. Maybe he didn't like the feel for a couple of games. Cleveland and Detroit, he only threw 9% of the time. What did he lean on more? He leaned over to the curveball or he leaned over to the splitter. We're going to have to check that. We're, we're not going to be able to go further without seeing that Shane throws the splitter. 
Unless unless Van Graps is just getting it wrong. And so those are the things we look at in the game log. But the other last piece, just click over one tab. So yeah, I'm showing the velocity. And these guys fluctuate, you know, 95.8 to start the season. He had a day here, he was averaging 97.5, you know. Closing out the season, 97.8. That's that's 98 on the cheddar. And then you want to look at plate discipline. And you want to look at the zone contact going sub 80 again. But look at that swinging strike percentage at the end. And what a guy can really flash. 15%, as we know, is very good. What are the floor? What are the ceiling? How, how many times does he touch it? Here's a Shane. How many times does Shane go up over a 20% swinging strike? A lot. Boston, 22%. The Angels, 23%. St. Louis, 20%. Boston, Baltimore, 20%, 59%. Close out the season a little cool, 7.5, 9.29. I'm sure that when Shane gets healthy and Shane works out again next season, he's going to be back and striking guys out again. Absolutely. Here we go. We brought up Shane. Did I miss that Shane is throwing a splitter? Interesting. Fangraphs isn't calling it that. So that would be something for me to investigate a little bit. I have a Shane on baseball savant throwing fastball, changeup, curveball, slider. While I have a Shane on Fangraphs. Gosh, are we looking at the same? This is wild. This is why we do these working meetings, throwing fastball, slider, curveball, splitter. You know, so maybe Fangraphs is picking up the, the change. Fangraphs is picking up a split finger. Baseball Savant is calling it a changeup. Might be one of those in, in between pitches. It's just a classification issue, but the stuff is still there. That That's how I'm breaking down my starting pitchers. And I will go a little bit deeper and start to shuffle these guys up to make sure that there's there's premium at the top. And for me, it's it's just going to be a line. You know, I, I wanted to fall asleep, so I put on some CBS today, listened to Scott White talking about making tiers and what what to do with tiers. And guys are approximately the same value. And I, I couldn't disagree more with Scott as usual because every pitcher is different. Every pitcher is getting it done totally differently. When we're in a salary cap scenario, we want to know specifically what we're buying, how into a pitcher we are, the amount of rope that we're going to give them. Because if we're paying for a starting pitcher, we got to give him the whole the whole season probably to get right until he gets injured. Eight games, twelve games, and still we see until we see some spin rate drop offs. We got to we got to turn that pitcher loose and accept what he gives us because it takes them a while to figure out the mechanics to get back into a a motion, a repeatable motion. So, so that's why we dive in. And I guess what I'm saying is there's an in and an out. There's pitchers I can tolerate, and there's pitchers I just can't trust. At the end of the season, next season, will I go back and say, oh, look, surprise, surprise. This pitcher I can now trust because he showed something. Sure, that could happen. What we don't know, the variability is year to year. Obviously, you have the Verducci report, which is pitchers that throw a 30% inning increase year over year are more likely to have forearm, elbow, Tommy John issues in the next season. But then again, a guy who's thrown 175 innings plus two, three, four seasons in a row, a little bit of a journeyman has built up that kind of stamina. What adjustments will these guys make next season? Will the arm come in fresh? How did they work their legs? How did the league adjust? Because we're seeing the arsenal. We're seeing the locations. That's going into, these are professional players. This is a professional league. That's going into the scouting reports and they're saying, hey, look, you know, Sandy Alcantara is leading change. Shohei is leading slider. So you got to look for that pitch. Let's sit on it. There, there's going to be this cat and mouse, but ultimately we can boil it down to these kinds of pitch arsenals. We're going to keep circling around, hovering the wagons. You know that what we like to do is Get a look at prices, get these closers right, get these catchers hitting. We're, we've been crushing hitting, but we'll, we'll tighten that up. We'll move some guys up, and we're going to shrink down to that little cloud of players we want, draftable players that are allowed to be on our team. Not every player in the league can play for me. Absolutely not. It's a very picky 
selective group of individuals and how we can work them in with salary cap. And you know I want to get back to salary cap strategy because I think I think I found a little bit of an evolution to be better there. Live and late. It's not as easy as living late the way it used to be. So maybe we'll dedicate a little time to dominating those salary caps. TGFBI, I want to hear from you guys. Holler at your boy.